Hello and welcome to episode three of NCIA Today. It's March 27th, 2020, and I'm your host, Bethany Moore, NCIA's communications manager. The month of March has been interesting to say the least, and the state of the world has presented some new challenges and concerns for everyone, but we're in this together. And the NCIA team continues to be the cannabis industry's advocate on Capitol Hill and is here to bring you relevant content to help your business. So thanks for tuning in. Off we go. First off, as you know, NCIA made the decision to postpone the remaining six of eight Cannabis Caucus events that had been scheduled throughout the month of March. Decisions surrounding future NCIA events are being assessed and we'll notify you on our social media platforms and in our weekly Canna Business Leader email newsletter. We look forward to our events calendar returning to business as usual as soon as it's safe to do so. Hang in there, everyone, from at least six feet away from others. For more on our response to the coronavirus, let's check in with NCIA's executive director and co-founder, Aaron Smith. Right now, what NCIA is focusing on uh, that I think is, is you know, the, of the utmost important is, importance is to make sure that uh, cannabis businesses are treated fairly uh, in any relief uh, aid that is coming from the federal government. Unfortunately, uh, the Small Business Administration uh, has uh, reiterated that they uh, do not provide financial aid or services to cannabis businesses that violate federal law, even when they are in compliance with their state law. And so uh, we are lobbying to, uh, to, to fix that injustice because cannabis businesses are already facing uh, more difficult challenges uh, than other, other businesses. Um, and we're also uh, advocating in, and, uh, in the states and encouraging our members to contact uh, the governors of their states to uh, ensure that cannabis businesses are uh, considered essential and can remain open during this time as long as certain social distancing uh, is uh, requirements are met and and there's been great success around that and I'm I am proud of the fact that we as an industry are being considered essential in uh, many many states uh, across the country right now what else is going on uh, yeah. behind the scenes at NCIA we are able to free up some bandwidth uh, in our communications and marketing department to uh, create online opportunities for members. The NCIA will be releasing more webinars and this will be also an opportunity for sponsors to, to buy advertising on, those, uh, on those, those platforms. There's you know a lot of uncertainty and uh, despair in the world right now, but uh, I think that there are so, there's some bright spots and cannabis is going to help uh, help get through this in, in many ways. Now, let's check in with NCIA's Director of Media Relations, Morgan Fox, to hear some of the highlights we saw in cannabis news this last month. Right now, what the media world is most talking about is the fact that uh, cannabis businesses, which may have been reviled several years ago, are now being considered essential in state after state. You know, this is a huge win for us, whereas years ago we would have been considered liabilities. Now we are considered essential. And that is something that uh, I think a lot of people really didn't expect. Uh, I'm curious how all this is going to impact us and our efforts in both the short and in the long term. In the short term, there are, uh, you know, a lot of stories about uh, really long lines at stores, which, uh, you know, is uh, good in the short term for individual businesses, uh, but potentially dangerous when it comes to social distancing. And uh, what we're seeing is that states are actually reacting to that in a positive manner. And uh, states that have not done so yet uh, are remiss because they can really send a message to consumers that they don't have to worry about continued uh, access to cannabis. They don't have to go to the illicit market. They can continue accessing, accessing cannabis from regulated stores and make sure that uh, they are getting the best quality products in a safe environment 
And cannabis businesses themselves are going above and beyond what uh, state, federal, and local authorities are asking of them in terms of cleanliness and social distancing. So this is uh, really an opportunity for us to show the rest of the country and the rest of the world that we are one of the most, if not the most responsible uh, business entities in the country. For those of you who weren't able to make it out to last month's Northeast Cannabis Business Conference, here are a few takeaways from the Illicit Market Summit, which was led by NCIA's Director of Public Policy, Andrew Klein. So first of all, the cannabis industry needs to help law enforcement find alternatives to arrest and incarceration, like locking doors and shutting off electricity and water, levying fines and prosecuting tax evasion, while relying heavily on alternatives to arrest and prosecution, so that we don't perpetuate the myriad problems associated with the war on drugs through these efforts. Second, the industry must better define the illicit market as rules and regulations look different from state to state. Third, the industry needs to define the root cause of the illicit market. Is it a lack of access for consumers, higher prices in the legal market due to tax disparities? a lack of economic opportunities for marginalized communities to enter the legal market, there is more to explore here. Fourth, the industry needs a forum for collaboration with law enforcement. Let's keep the lines of communication open and clear. Fifth, the industry needs a pathway for illicit market operators to enter the legal market. States like Massachusetts and Illinois are making great strides in this direction. Sixth, Law enforcement has competing demands and needs help prioritizing cases. Finally, the industry needs to speak with one voice and start rowing in the same direction. Let's share information on packaging and labeling, testing, universal symbols, etc. nationally. NCIA's Policy Council continues its efforts to create a safe place for everyone in the industry to begin that dialogue. NCIA's 10th annual Cannabis Industry Lobby Days, previously scheduled to take place in mid-May, has been rescheduled for September 15th through 17th. Congress will be back in session and the election will be just weeks away at that time. So while we all know that much of daily life is in flux right now and we don't yet know what the future holds, the whole team at NCIA wants you to know that we're still working and advocating for this industry we all love, and we'll be creating new ways for you to engage with the industry in the digital world, including bringing you more content like podcasts, reports, and educational blog articles. Tune into NCIA's Cannabis Industry Voice weekly podcast on Spreaker, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Apple Podcasts, where we're included among the top 50 U.S. business news podcasts, sitting at number 46 last I heard. You can also listen directly on our website at www.thecannabisindustry.org slash podcast. That's it for this episode of NCIA Today. Thanks for checking it out, and be sure to check out all those links that are surely in the description of this video.